So here I am in the state of nature. It's just me out here. There's no other people. There's some deer, but it's just me and the deer out here. And this is basically what Hobbes means by state of nature. Now we shouldn't think state as in a state of being or something like that, but more like political state. Right? And the idea of the state of nature is not so much that I'm in a political state with trees, <laughs> but that this is kind of uh, the political state with nobody. Right? I've reached no agreements with anybody else. I've, I haven't entered into a society or anything like that. Out here, it's just me. Now in the state of nature, since there is no political state, uh, there's only one good thing. Right? And the one good thing is preserving my own life. That's the good, preserving my life. Uh, and kind of, consequently, there's only one bad thing. And that's either the threat of death or death itself. Right? These are, that's the bad thing that's out here. So the good is preserving my own life and the bad is the threat to it. Now, consequently, since there's only one good thing, I have only one obligation. That obligation is to preserve my own life, to do what's reasonable to preserve my own life. Now, reasonable here is something more like effective. Right? Um, it would be unreasonable for me to try to preserve my life by eating trees. Rather, I should go after those deer. <laughs> uh, that's what's reasonable. That's, what's, that's uh, what is my right. My right in the state of nature is I have the right to everything. If it's good for me to preserve, if it's useful for me to preserve my own life, I have a right to it. I have a right to it because I have one obligation, to preserve my own life. I'm forbidden from doing only one thing. Uh, I am forbidden from endangering my life or ending it. Though that's the only thing that I'm forbidden to do is to either endanger my life or to end it. So out here in the state of nature, by, I'm by myself. Right? I'm not, um, I'm not uh, relying upon other people, people. I'm not. I haven't entered into any agreements, anything like that. This is the state, the you know, kind of the political state again of nature, of what's uh, uh, what's just going to be involved with human nature. <clears throat> to preserve my life, uh, you know, my, my obligation is to preserve my life. I'm forbidden from ending it or threatening it, and I have the right to everything. So in the state of nature, not only is it the case that, you know, I have one obligation and I'm forbidden to do only one thing, uh, that means, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm obligated to preserve my own life and I'm forbidden from en endangering or ending my own. Well, that means I have no obligations to anybody else. I don't have the obligation to save anybody else's life, only my own. I'm not forbidden from taking anybody else's life, just my own. Well, this raises an interesting wrinkle. Because inevitably, we're going to run into other people. Right? There are other people in the world. <clears throat> now, here's the thing about people. You know, we, there are some differences to be sure, but we're roughly equal in terms of our capacities, in terms of strength and intelligence, right? in terms of uh, personality. Yeah, you know, you take any two people next to each other, then there's going to be a difference such that one may be able to dominate the other. Yeah, that's always going to happen, sure. But the equality here means that there's no one person who is stronger than everybody else. One person may be stronger than another. But there's no one person who's stronger than everybody else. Now, even if this strong person, let's take this hypothetical strong person, was walking around, <clears throat> they might be able to, you know, either fight off or kill off some individual people. But, you know, before too long, the rest of everybody else will, you know, kind of gang up on them, right? And end their reign of terror, <laughs> so to speak. So, in the state of nature, we are all roughly equal. There's no one person that can just by force of will alone and by capability can dominate everybody else. That means that there's going to be any kind of cohesion or any kind of organization or social order, it can only be through agreement. 
through the exercise of free will, not the abolishment of it. So, here I am in the state of nature, and I'm roughly equal to everybody else. And they're after the same thing I am. Right? I have a right to everything, well so do they. They have a right to everything too. Well, if they have a right to everything, and uh, they're after the same thing I am, can I trust that person? Do you see anybody? I have to be careful, you know. I have the right to everything, but so does everybody else. And I haven't made any agreements with anybody else. Right? So, if, you know, I'm looking for a spring of water right now because I'm really thirsty. And if I find a spring of water, somebody else is there. It's going to be a free-for-all. Remember, I, I only have one obligation. That's to preserve my own life. I don't have to preserve anybody else's. They don't have to preserve mine. I'm only forbidden from taking my life. I'm not forbidden from taking anybody, else and anybody else's life. And you know, neither are they. They're not forbidden from taking my life. So I, I don't have any agreements with anybody. So I can't trust them. And if... What was that? And if we should come across each other, and we both have the right to everything, good things are not going to happen. Likely, there will be violence, probably death. Well, that's just what happens in the state of nature. If you don't have any agreements with anybody else, you have a lack of trust. You have no agreements. You can do pretty much anything you want. I got away from that, whoever that was, last time. I mean, next time I may not be so lucky. You know, this whole right to everything business is, um, well, it's a little dangerous, isn't it? Because with the right to everything, then it sure looks like we're going to wind up killing each other at some point. I'm obligated to protect my own life here. I'm supposed to protect my own life, but this right to everything business looks like it's threatening it. If I just look out for myself, and that's what everybody else can do, well, it's not good news. <clears throat> so, well, let me think here. You know, I'm obligated to protect my own life, and this right to everything is threatening it. Well, Maybe I ought to start laying down some of my rights to everything. You know, maybe I ought to find that, that other guy that's out... That other guy that's out there and cut a deal with him. Maybe we can work together. Or better yet, maybe we agree just not to kill each other. Maybe we agree to... Uh, Settle some of our disputes peacefully through reason and through trade, maybe. So yeah, this, this is what Hobbes has in mind. That my right to everything threatens my own existence. So I better lay down some of those rights. I better cut a deal with whoever else is out there. And then maybe we cut a deal with the third and Maybe we find another group and we cut a deal with them where we agree to lay down our rights to everything and we, you know, we give up some of our rights to, say, kill each other. We give up our rights to take just anything. We have something like property rights, how we acquire property. Maybe we have some agreements as to, you know, what makes a fair trade, a fair deal. 
Well, I'm kind of eager to start laying down some of my rights because this getting scared in the woods stuff is, is not fun. I, th I think maybe I'm going to go find that guy and, and cut a deal. Yeah. Yeah, it's time for me to leave the state of nature. It's time for me to enter into a political state, a social state with other people.